Hi, hello, and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Rachel. I post videos all about health, fitness, nutrition, lifestyle, and commentary. Today's video is actually going to be all about, I'm sure you read the title, seven reasons why you should get rid of your scale today. And this is something that I've been wanting to talk about on my channel for a while. If you follow me on Instagram, you might be aware of this factor. You know, I've been posting about it for a while, but it's something that I dealt with throughout my childhood and, you know, into my teens. And that was my ED. And throwing away my scale made a world of difference. In fact, it, you know, I might go so far as to say it saved my life. So I wanted to share with you guys seven reasons why you should throw away your scale today. So even if you, you know, don't have an ED, you've never had an ED or suffered from anything similar as far as mental illness, I still think throwing away your scale would be beneficial and that's because it's not a legitimate, you know, way to show how you're improving your health, fitness, or life in any way, in fact. It's only showing you how much you weigh and what your gravitational pull onto this planet exactly is. So, to start off, the number one reason why you should get rid of your scale today is because muscle weighs more than fat per unit of volume. It's actually more dense would be the correct way of putting it. Muscle is actually 23% more in weight per pound than fat would be per pound. So it's actually really impossible to show that you might be, you know, changing your body's composition, improving your health, improving your appearance, all by the number on the scale. And um, I'd love to show some photos. I felt like this was hard to understand until you see photos of people and you see exactly how little that number on the scale changes and how dramatically people's bodies often change or how they'll even gain a significant amount of weight but look much thinner and much healthier in the photos in which they weigh 20 pounds more. Uh, personally, I'll put up some photos. I actually didn't fluctuate in weight very much, but my body has changed dramatically. And to me, that was mind blowing when I really put it together. So the number one reason why you should get rid of your scale is because it's an inaccurate representation of your body composition. Number two, weight fluctuates and it fluctuates really easily. So we've all done this thing where you work really hard all week in the gym or you may be two weeks in the gym and you notice that you've lost five pounds at the end of the week you feel great you're so happy you're so excited you know everything's going great and suddenly next week rolls around it's monday you go to weigh yourself at the start of the day and you've gained all of it back and then some and that just kills your motivation when you see that I'm sure you felt like that. I know I have. You feel horrible. What did I do wrong? How did this happen? All of these things are, you know, running through your brain. And the point or the fact is, you know, a lot of these things are out of your control. Your body could simply have more water in it, salty foods recently. Your hormones could be changing. You could be under a lot of stress. You could have torn muscles from the workouts in the week before, and that could have resulted in you weighing more. And for women, you know, your menstrual cycle plays a huge role in your body weight, and so much so that you could fluctuate pounds each day if you were to weigh yourself each day it could you know be five or six pounds each day you're fluctuating and that would drive you crazy it would drive anyone crazy looking at the scale each day so especially if you're a woman i think that your weight will fluctuate so frequently that checking it all the time is bad for your mental health and isn't an accurate representation of what's really going on in your body the bottom line here is the pounds we weigh is not a reliable source of information when it comes to determining our health and fitness level. Number three, the scale can ruin your motivation. 
So this really ties into the previous um, point I was making in which your body is fluctuating all the time. And when you see the number go up, it can destroy your motivation. And that's just not something you need in your head all the time and you need to be affecting you when you're trying to become a healthier and happier person all around. So health coaches often call it an intrinsic motivation when you yourself are excited to go to the gym, when you wake up amped, you know, whatever it is, it's intrinsic coming from inside you. And the number on the scale is an extrinsic motivator, meaning it's an outside force. So weighing yourself can be a negative motivator and that's just not something you need to bring into your health and fitness journey. You know, it might sabotage your health um, journey and your health efforts. Number four. So just because you weigh less does not mean that you're actually fit or healthier. In reality, weighing less means nothing to your health. Your body composition, muscle to fat ratio, strength, endurance, resting heart rate, and mood are some of the ways in which you could determine your level of health or measure your level of health. But, you know, Weight is not one of them. So your body is your forever partner. I mean, I'm sure you've heard it, that's kind of porny, but it is with you every day for the rest of your life. And it relies on you to take care of it. So nourish your body with foods that will help protect it, make you feel good, and you know, improve your health from the inside out, rather than putting so much pressure and stress on your body simply for not weighing the number you want it to. Number five, your mental health directly affects your body and the scale could be damaging the relationship you have with your body. So your mind and body are connected and they're connected in more ways than one. Poor mental health can lead to chronic disease, and bad choices when it comes to your health and fitness. So every week, you know, you see people or in the health and fitness industry, I talk to people who have spent a large portion of their life trying to achieve one specific weight. It is the end all of be all, the everything that they could ever want. And, you know, you have to ask them why. They spend so much of their day just feeling bad that they aren't able to reach this number and that is affecting their mental health, which in turn is affecting their physical health. So they often spend their days worried about reaching this weight and stressing themselves out to various degrees. Then they either spend their time trying to put in place behaviors that will help them achieve this dream weight but they usually end up being behaviors that do the opposite. They often end the day feeling depressed and defeated for not being able to stick to these strict rules they're placing upon themselves. And they're not doing what's actually needed to lose weight or to get a healthier life and improve their body composition. So from a both a physical and mental standpoint, Focusing on the number on the scale is insignificant and often interferes with your actual goals. Number six, you might start to improve your self-worth. So the stark reality is that weight tells you nothing except how much gravitational pull you have on earth. That's it. Point blank period. That's it. So Weight doesn't tell you what kind of person you are, how smart you are, or how valuable you are. I mean, we all know this, but often we boil everything up to that number on the scale, and this is a toxic mind state. So I know you know that, but knowing that doesn't undo years and years of being mentally conditioned to value the number, number on the scale and to value yourself based off of your weight. And repeating it to yourself is one way of undoing this programming, but you know, you can only really s separate yourself from the scale if you throw it away. And the final reason why you should get rid of your scale is because obsession 
can be a slippery slope. And again, you know, personally, I am proof of that. If you obsess over the number on the scale to a certain point, you'll often find yourself in a negative headspace and that can lead to mental illness. And it's no surprise that EDs and obsession about our weight have become a commonplace in the US and all across the world. But specifically in America, almost 30 million citizens of all ages and all genders have acknowledged that they themselves are suffering from some degree of an ED today. Now, I'm not saying that everyone who weighs themselves on a scale is obsessed or will become obsessed and that will lead to an ED. I'm simply saying from a personal experience, it's an easy thing to unknowingly you know, fall down the rabbit hole that is obsession leading to mental illness. You know, there was a time when I actually wrote down the number on the scale every single day, morning and night, and my self-worth was so, so tied to that number that I was incredibly depressed. I would often feel like if the number wasn't where I wanted it to be, and it pretty much never was, that I didn't deserve to eat or to drink or anything at all. So it can be a really mentally and physically exhausting problem to have and pressure to put on yourself. So for those who weigh themselves on a regular basis, I challenge you to hide your scale for a week, two weeks, maybe a month, and see how your mental health improves. If you do feel like it has, you know, improved your life, think about throwing it away. Or for those that are so caught up in it and you think this could help you, just throw it out today. Don't even think twice about it. And I hope it helps you in some way. I'd really like to point out, you know, what's important in life and what to try to think about rather than the number on the scale. So, you know, we all want to be healthy, to look great, to perform our best in life, both on the inside and outside. But obsessing about the weight on the scale can actually get in the way of your body composition goals. I know I've repeated myself a couple times, but you know, if your current goal is weight loss and you feel like you're getting nowhere, maybe it's time to reevaluate your goals and, you know, instead of revolving everything around the scale, instead you can focus on a goal of dropping a pant size or a dress size and you can choose to use a tape measure to show your progress rather than the number on the scale. Bottom line, throw away your scale. If parting causes you more stress, limit your weigh-ins and realize before stepping on it that the number you read out tells you a teeny tiny fraction of your body's true story and it just might be lying to you. Okay guys, I really hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, let me know in the comment section. If you throw away your scale, let me know in the comment section. I'd love to hear more about it and how you know it changes your life. If it does, if it doesn't, if you have really anything you wanna say, let me know. But yeah, you can check out my Instagram, follow me on my socials. I. Hope you have a beautiful rest of your day and you're an amazing person. <laughs>